Um, so we're talking about the vocabulary in Unit 13. Um, let's talk about the verbs first. There's, there's um, gignomai. We talked about this class tonight. The par principal parts are gignomai, gnaisomai, egonomain, gegana, yeah, gnaisomai. In Amen, which is the aorist. Use one of the th important things about that form is that the verb to be, which we haven't had yet, ha had yet, has a, um, no aorist. So, so again, Amen functions as its aorist. Then there's a perfect gegana, and then there's a perfect middle gegene, gegene mai. Oh, yeah. I mean, there is five, but there's no six That's since right. this is a default verb. Gegene mai. So you. You've got right. all the forms are deponented except for the perfect. Okay, you can see that you've got an alternation between the the root gn, which is in the first principal part. Maybe you should write that over there next to it. The root there is gn. That's the one that's reduplicated. Then in the next two, you've got the root gen. Okay, and the arist as well. It's gen, but in the perfect, the root is gone. G o n. Right, so you got the alternation between the O vowel and the root, the E vowel and the root, and the O vowel and the root, mm -hmm. right? Um, and you got the reduplication with an iota to mark the present of the form and the um, and the uh, um, absence of reduplication in the aorist and the reduplication with an epsilon in the in the uh, perfect. Right. Um, but you have. And you know, the perfect middle is a distinctive form. So this this word means to be born, to become, or to be. Um, especially in the aorist, it, it's a synonym of the verb to be, but often in other places. Um, the, the next verb is erchamai, alausamai, elfan, and elutha, which means to come or to go. Okay, both. We we separate the, those out in Greek. You have to decide from the context which it is. It's another example of that that we talked about. Balo that means to throw and to hit depends on where you are <laughs> in mm -hmm. relation to what's happening, yeah. whether it's coming or going. Yep, yeah, on with the circumflex over the absolute. And the perfect sorry. smooth meeting, smooth Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And elelutha is the perfect. Okay, it's an intransitive verb, so there's no aorist passive. You can't say be come, the, <laughs> right? Um. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, um, all, all the last three principal parts there all come from the root e l e u t h, which you have in eleutheria. One of them, one of them is has the e grade elo. Eleutha has the zero grade, and elthon was the same that it was from the root elutha, with the upsilon in the middle, got syncopated out of it. So they all belong to the same stem, except for erchamai, which has come in as an outsider, as a new verb. Which ha doesn't have any cognates in Indo-European either, whereas mm. have some for the others. Okay, so then we've got manthano, um, a new verb of the type lambano that we talked about last week. Manthano means to learn or to understand. It, the, it's got, it's a mathesomai. The aorist is amathon. So there you can see that math is the root on which the present is built. We tend to think. In regular verbs, the present is the basis of the paradigm. In older verbs, it was the aorist. I hope you're beginning mm. to see that, and you built up things on top of the aorist. So math is the root, and manthano is built by adding the ano suffix and sticking an n or an m between the 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 uh, math. And so you have lab lambano, math manthano. We're going to have others. Lath lanthano. We're going to get into more. Okay. I talked to, uh, to you about lip and limpano, right? It's the aorist that becomes the basis of the present of these verbs. So that means learn or understand. Now we got the verb machamai. We have the noun mache, which means a battle. We have the verb machamai, which means to fight. And another deponent verb, machamai, machumai, machasamein, and machemai. Um, machumai is an epsilon contract, yep, future. A mache samen, an aorist, so it's not a, a passive deponent, and mache mai is the perfective form, so it means to, to fight, and it governs the date of the book, tells us. 
um, they give us, um, let's not write these two down. There are two compounds, uh, one of didome and the other of histeme, with the preverb meta, and it, it says that it indicates, that it has a preverb meta, indicates sharing or change, okay? So sharing, you can think of, if you think of metamorphosis, what the morph part mm. is shape. Metamorphosis means change of shape, right? Mm -hmm. Um, the other thing is is uh, uh, to take part in. So so we we talked. Well, I think about the Greek word for participle, which is metoche, which means sharing in. So the och part is the root to have, which I don't know if we had yet. But anyhow, oh, yet. means <laughs> taking part in or sharing. So it's the translation of the Latin. in Latin. When you translate that, you get particeps, which we get participle, um, and metanhistamai which is a deponent verb, okay, not, in other words, it's the intransitive sense of his statement, mm -hmm. means, means to migrate, okay, to m get up from where you are and change your place. Change place. So that one's uh, uh, sharing. So metadidome means to share in, or give a share to, okay, and to share, and, and metanistamai, okay, the intransitive means to migrate, uh, to change your place. So there are those two verbs reflect the two possible functions of meta and preverbs as a preverb. Pre okay, the last verb in the lesson is felgo, which means to flee. Principal parts are felgo, felx, elia, fugon, and pefelga. Has no again, it's an intransitive verb like erchomai, mm -hmm. so there are no passive forms. Um, and the only tricky thing about it is that. Besides, aside from being meaning to flee, it means uh, or or run away. It means to be a defendant in a lawsuit, because in, you, we have this vestiges of the Latin uh, principle about this in English. So you call a prosecutor is the person who 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 is not the defendant but the person who brings the lawsuit. Mm -hmm. uh, Prosequor in Latin means to chase after someone. Mm -hmm. So, so the the prosecutor in a, in a Greek trial is hotioko, the one who pursues, and the defendant is hafelgo, the one who flees. Jeez. <laughs> so, so that's the metaphor. It's all right, kind of hairy when you think about lawsuits. But anyway, Greeks are into lawsuits big time, so you come across this vocabulary mm -hmm. of hafelgo, the defendant, hotioko, the prosecutor. All right, so let's look at some of the nouns and other words in this. There's archon, which means a magistrate in the Athenian um, city-state. It's just the participle of the verb archo, so it means a person in charge or a ruler. Mm -hmm. But in Athens, it means it's translated archon, which is just transliteration of the word into into Latinate English archon. Um, and uh, um, so it means he who he who is in charge or who he holds a certain office in Athens. There are a whole bunch of different ones, uh, depending on what you are and what your function is. You have a different um, title, but there are all kinds of archons. There's the word aspis, aspidos, hey, uh, a word for shield. It means the round shield, the kind that hoplites carry. Um, there's heorte, a word that's translated festival, and it means a ritual festival, mm -hmm. okay? Um, and in particular, it means a banquet that's part of the festival, so it features a sacrifice and stuff like that. Um, so these are words that are associated with the other word we had that's part of this vocabulary is thusia, okay? Mm -hmm. Thusia and heorte go, go together. Then we get this preposition at P. It's hard to get to define prepositions, and the book gives you some nice examples in the notes. This is on page 383. They're look, worth looking at. But in, with the genitive, it says it means on with the dative, on pertaining to or on condition that. That's actually quite common. Epi with the dative, that means on condition that. You can often even have epi plus the relative pronoun in the dative. Ho just means on the condition that. F ho, okay? Um, all by itself without any antecedent for the relative. And then you have epi with the accusative, which means on to, over, against, or for the purpose of something. Um, and in composition, it tells you as a preverb, it means upon, over, against, after, and, and I'd add in response to. We often have pairs of a simple form of the verb, an epi means to do it in answer to some, what somebody else does. Okay? That's what's the accusative. Yeah. But uh, as a preverb. Yeah. I got you. Yeah.
um, there's the word hetairos, which hetairu, which it translates rather innocuously as companion. It also means political crony, okay? <laughs> um, and, uh, and then uh, um, you can tell us, Billy, see what the feminine form means. Oh, it means a courtesan. <laughs> yeah, or yes. Female yeah. companion. Yes. So these are professionalized prostitutes in Greek city states who have their own rituals and legal status and stuff like that. Um, there's Euripides, the name of the tragic poet, who is like not like Socrates, but like Stratiotes, okay? So it's a it's a um, uh, one of those first declension masculine names. So the Socrates Socratus is one type of noun name in in ace and you know repeats is another mm -hmm. and you can't tell just by looking at the nominative which one they are you mm -hmm. have to know the genitive in greek a lot more of them are are of the socrates type the socrates socratus type the stems than of the repeats type um you have the noun kratos kratus to another noun of the genos type that means strength or power we got mechane which means a gadget a device um, we get the word machine from it um, by way of the Latin uh, borrowing of it, of the Greek word into, into uh, Latin. We have a, this is a really old word for sword, xiphos, xiphus, ta. Okay, you have that word in linear B in the oldest Greek that we have. It's not mm -hmm. the standard word for sword, which is, um, there's, uh, there's homoios, homoia, homoion, like an adjective that governs the dative. So you want to say somebody is like something. You do homoios in the proper gender number in case and a dative to go with it. That's one way of doing it. Um, let's see, we got, here's another word, pais paidos, which is the, really the standard word for child in Greek. It can be either of masculine or feminine gender. So it's another one of these tricky nouns, like theos, you have to translate it um, as boy or girl, okay, depending on whether its gender is masculine or feminine, so you got to be careful, hey or ha, but the inflections are the same. Um, let's see, there's the adjective, no, the noun puspados, foot, from which you get podiatrist and stuff like that. There's the uh, adjective safes, safes, like alethes and alethes, that means clear. Summachas. Okay, so this is a compound of sun and the root mach, and to get an adjective, meaning fighting along with someone else. So therefore, it becomes a noun that means an ally. Mm. Okay. Tejas tejus is a word for a city wall, a fortified wall, not just a, you know, a, a like kind house of, wall. Well, not a house wall, right. but a real strong wall. Um, there's the word tapas tapu ha, ha that means placed and we have in topography but there's the word trapayon trapayo a neuter noun of the second declension that from which the English word trophy comes and that book tells you it means a trophy or a victory monument and what what happened in Greek battles was when you defeated the other side they turned around and run so it ran mm -hmm. away so trop means the Tropion means the place at which the enemy turned, and you made a mound of, of dirt and, and stuff that, you, that the people had left behind as a sign <laughs> that you beat them. Greeks are into defeating other people and winning. <laughs> okay, big time. Chalapos, chalape, chalapon, an adjective that means harsh or difficult or cruel, it can mean as well. As, uh, mm -hmm. no. And lastly, there's the word for hand, cher, cheros. A monosyllabic noun of the third declension. Remember these? Nux nuctos, in which the, the in the genitive and the dative the accents on the last syllable. So it's ker, keros, keri, and then hera, uh, or hera with the accent on the first syllable. Right? Um, I think that's it.